All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the random effector and how we can use it with a MoGraph cloner, but it can also be applied to other MoGraph objects and even used as a deformer. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, what we're gonna do with this is start by seeing what it looks like uh, or what we can do with the random effector when applied to a cloner. So let's go ahead and create a cube in this cube. We can then put in a cloner. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option when I create the cloner to make sure the cube ends up as a child of it. And then from here in the Object tab, um, I just wanna space these out ever so slightly so we can see a little bit of the spacing in between. Okay, and then I'm gonna create more of them, maybe like 10 in the X and 10 in the Z. And then lastly, I'll just add the fillet here to make these a little bit more detailed around the corners just a bit. So we have our cloner set up. And now what I'm gonna do is create a random effector. So I'm gonna come here to my effectors and choose random. Okay, now since I didn't have the cloner selected when I created the random effector, it did not get applied, which means I need to go into the effectors tab of the cloner and drag and drop the random effector in there. And so now we are seeing what the random effector does by default. And if we go into um, the effector itself, um, starting with the parameter tab, we are seeing that default value, randomized position 50 centimeters on the X, Y, and Z axis. So it definitely lets us know it's being applied. But if we want to change the position, we can increase this even more. One of the things that's important to point out with the random effector is that it randomizes both positively and negative, negatively based on the value we add here. So if this is 176 centimeters, it can be moved up to 176 centimeters on the positive X axis and up to a negative 176 centimeters along the X axis. And just to see, see that, just to show that, what we can do is actually just check scale, okay? And uniform scale here. And if you set this to 0.5, Notice how we now have some that are smaller and some that are larger than previously. So that confirms it, okay? Now, I'll point out where we can actually control that here in a little bit, but I just wanted to point that out. So I'm going to check position back on. And one of the uh, main uses of the random effector is to make a single object or even a couple of objects, like a couple of cubes or, or whatever in here, look different. So that way you don't have to make a whole bunch of different cubes or you know whatever it is you're putting inside a cloner by using the random effector to affect the position perhaps the scale and even the rotation um you can make this one cube look different look unique okay and that's a big part of working with the random effector we could do the same with rotation so i can then randomize the rotation here Okay, to make each one look like it's been positioned individually. And then like we did a second ago, scale. Now, um, I have uniform scale checked on, which means um, it's gonna scale all three axes the exact same amount. I can uncheck that and then add different values on the X, Y, and Z if I would like. And so what we've done now is added this one cube, but because we've changed all these different uh, cubes positions, their scales, rotations, it looks like a bunch of different cubes without having to go in and make them ourselves. And so while this is just a cube, um, it can, uh, you know, be useful for other objects as well to make them look different and unique. Also in the parameter tab, something that can be um, worthwhile here is the color mode. If you set this to effector color, you will then see random colors here okay, based on the effector. <clears throat> so that can be helpful. And if you're really inclined, you can use this color in your material. But I'm gonna set this back to off, okay? And then we're gonna go to the effector tab because there's also some interesting things you can do here. So aside from just the strength, okay, we also have our minimax. And I got just a bit ahead of myself here. Um, what I'm gonna do, is uncheck position and uncheck rotation here. So we're just looking at scale, okay? And let's go back to uniform scale with this. Um, so that is back at 0.5. So this is what we had earlier where um, we have 
Some cubes that are smaller than the original, others are larger. And that is due to this minimum and maximum value here. So you can see we're able to go um, up to negative 100% of whatever values we set here or, and up to a positive 100%. However, if you want to change that, you can very easily do that. So by setting this to say zero, I'm saying cubes can only be up to 100% larger, all right, than whatever values we set here. Um, and the same would be true with position, okay, um, or rotation. It would only use positive values based on what we set up here. So that can be very helpful to know. Um, and once again, if you want to kind of see that, take this down to uh, the maximum down to negative 100%, and we're, they're all smaller. So let's set this back to 100. Okay, we also have some different random modes here. Now there's something with these random modes I wanna point out, which we'll see here shortly. Um, but one of the most interesting things is that with noise and turbulence, you get animation. Okay, so if I switch this to noise and then hit play, you'll see we have animation. And this animation will be applied to any of the properties you have here whether it's position, whether it's rotation. Now, if I do have position checked for just a minute and I come into the effector tab, we also have index. And index is going to separate the values that it's using for the animation. So notice here how the movement looks um, a lot more random. Things are going in all of our all the different directions where if index is unchecked, everything just kind of goes diagonally. Um, and so that's what index allows us to do is kind of separate and make sure it's using different values for each of the properties we have um, turned on in our parameter tab and animated. Back in the effector tab, you can adjust the animation speed and scale. The speed is pretty straightforward. Lower, oops, didn't mean to go to zero, but lower values mean slower, higher values mean faster. Scale is like the scale of the noise pattern being used. So larger values mean there's gonna be less um, variation between one clone and the next in terms of what they're doing. And I think it's easier to see that if we once again, um, kind of simplify this. This time around though, I'm gonna uncheck scale and just have this moving on the Y axis. So just setting values, um, zeroing out the X and Z, leaving the value in the Y. We get something like this where the cubes are, are doing very different movements, however, in the effector tab, if you adjust the scale to something larger, like let's just say 700%, okay, actually not large enough. Let's do 2000. Oh, let's uncheck indexed as well. There we go. That was a trick. But now we can see the pattern is much larger. It's much more smoothed out. The, the cubes are doing something very similar now as opposed to when the scale is small, doing something different. So that can be helpful to kind of simplify the animation, tone it down a bit if there's too much variation going on here. And you have similar options with turbulence as well. It too uh, is animated, okay? So that is the random effector, okay? A couple of other things I want to mention about working with the random effector. While the random effector is really nice, you can do something very similar when using other effectors and the random Field. And this actually opens up other options. So for instance, if I get rid of the random effector and um, create a plane effector, okay, make sure that's applied here, right? Moved up on the Y axis. I can go into my plane and then fields and choose here a random field. And you're gonna see a lot of the same properties we just saw before, but the difference is this is almost more of our noise um, texture or shader that you might've used before. We have all of the different noise types like you would expect to see. You have some of the other properties like individual scale properties for the different axes, animation speed, okay? But unlike the random effector, one of the things I really, really like about the random field is we can make it loop. So that can be really, really important depending on what exactly you're using this for. Okay, so for instance, if I just put the loop period here to say 90 frames, we should now see this loop, okay? And because this is 
the plane effector, the parameter tab still works very similar, just like the random effector. So you could do rotation, okay, to get random rotation here, as well as scale. Okay, so it works very similarly, not quite. Notice how we're not quite getting the positive and negative. Well, that's because in the plane effector, the minimum is set to zero. So we could set this to the negative 100. Actually, not sure that did anything. Um, that should have helped. But digging into the, the random field here would allow us to get something closer, but we're definitely on the right track. So that's a look at another way you can randomize things, and it's especially important if you want to make something loop. Now, I also mentioned that we can use the random effector as a deformer, and this is similar for other deformers, though I do find the random, the, the one of the more uh, common ones to do this for. So I just created a cube, and I'm gonna create a random effector and make it a child of the cube just like I would if this was any other effector. Now, before I go too much further, I wanna make sure I have some segments. So I'm gonna increase some segments there for the random effector to work with, maybe even add a fillet. And in order to get this to work, you need to go to the deformer tab here, and you can choose how you want this deformer to be applied, whether you want it to be applied to the whole object. Okay, so essentially just working with its position, scale and rotation as a whole, individual points, and you can see that's pretty crazy, or polygons, which is a little bit less crazy. Points is typically what I would recommend doing, uh, but now what we can do is go in the parameter tab and turn these values down so this isn't breaking as much. And really the main one here is going to be the Z, as that is really what is pushing and pulling these points along their normal, okay? So on the top here, points either get pushed up or down, on the corners there, they're pushed up in the direction they're facing. So Z is really kind of the main one you would want to use here. And honestly, fillets may be kind of a bad idea since that's gonna limit how much we can push and pull this. So let me fix that. Turn off fillet, we can then come in here. You can see I'm able to push this a lot further before things start to break. Okay, and just like we did before, all the same things apply. You could change the mode to noise to get some animation. All right, if I wanted to make something like say an ice cube, this is a pretty good way of doing it. Um, I may not want an animated mode here, but I could come into my parameter tab, kind of set this up the way I want. And if I really want some detail, throw it into oops, a subdivision surface to kind of help smooth it out a little bit more um, while still kind of preserving that detail. And now maybe I can push this just a bit further. Although if, really, I'm not sure that is very ice cube like, but you can get some very interesting kind of organic and natural type animations by using this um, uh, random effector as a deformer. Okay, so lots of different things you can do. And hopefully you're starting to see some of those possibilities. So that's going to do it for this video. If there's anything else you want to see, please let me know and take care.